It has been a creepy, evident lust of this president since literally his first day in office that he wanted to see this, that he wanted to see military hardware, missile launchers, tanks, aircraft all rolled out and put on display for him. You remember he wanted, he literally wanted tanks and missile launchers rolled down the streets of Washington, D.C. for his inauguration, right? You may also remember that his inauguration was a disappointment for the president in lots of ways, not least because he got an ill-attended tractor parade and, you know, baton twirlers instead of the missile launchers and Abrams tanks that he wanted ripping up D.C.'s streets to celebrate him. Well, it took three plus years of him in office, but he finally got his military in the streets. One of the things that has been weighing extra heavily on the sort of death of the Republic scale that we all keep handy these days, um, is that no one will quite admit in the Trump administration and even in the military as to what it is exactly they're doing with these threats to use the U.S. military against the American people. No one will quite admit to what exactly they're participating in and who exactly is making it happen and what exactly is being unfurled here. I mean, yesterday we had the first reports that the president had ordered the deployment of the active duty U.S. Army against U.S. citizens on domestic soil. We got these first reports that he had ordered the deployment in the streets of D.C. of an active duty military police unit from Fort Bragg in North Carolina. There were then conflicting and confused reports last night as to whether the president was using the Insurrection Act of 1807 to deploy active duty troops in places other than D.C., even over the objections of the governors of those states. As of last night, officials at the Pentagon told NBC News they didn't know if the Insurrection Act thing was happening or not. We're just making it up on the fly, I guess. As the president in the Rose Garden licked his lips last night and made that herky fast inhale sound that he does and then said, as we speak, I am dispatching thousands and thousands of heavily armed soldiers. After that pronouncement uh, from him, not last night after he said those words and actually not all day today, would the Pentagon actually say how many of these supposed thousands of thousands of heavily armed U.S. soldiers were actually being, in the president's words, dispatched? on U.S. soil. And honestly, dispatching is not the right verb that you should apply to soldier deployments here or abroad. But whatever, that's what he said. That's what he said. But the Pentagon wouldn't elaborate, wouldn't explain, wouldn't say what was happening. And it sort of seemed like maybe they did not know. The New York Times was still reporting into the early evening tonight that it wasn't clear whether it was only going to be military police battalions deployed against the American people on the president's orders or whether it would be other types of of U.S. troops as well. It was not until tonight that the excellent defense reporter at the Associated Press, James Laporta, uh, broke the news in the national press that, yeah, actually, it's not just military police battalions, it's combat battalions. It's the 82nd Airborne. Quote, on Tuesday, today, roughly 700 members of the Army's 82nd Airborne Division had arrived at two military bases near Washington, D.C. Another 1,400 soldiers are ready to be mobilized within an hour. The soldiers are armed and have riot gear as well as bayonets. Yes, bayonets. Like, think Korean War, right? A bayonet is the dagger-like thing they can mount to the end of a rifle so that they can stab people with it. Uh, The president has ordered troops with bayonets from the 82nd Airborne to deploy in the United States against the American people. Uh, For context here, here's some training footage recently posted online from the 10th Mountain Division showing their rifle bayonet assault course. This is how soldiers in the current U.S. Army are are, are trained to use bayonets mounted on their rifles. Why did they have them deploy with bayonets? I mean, the idea of the bayonet is to get in close and stab the enemy. In case that's easier than shooting them from a foot away. That's part of how President Trump is equipping these soldiers that he's deploying against the American population right now. Uh, He's also doing this. Um, The Associated Press, again, reporter James Laporta, also reporting tonight, quote, Dateline Washington, 
President Donald Trump ordered military aircraft to fly above the nation's capital last night as a show of force against American demonstrators protesting the death of George Floyd, according to two Department of Defense officials. Show of force missions are designed to intimidate and, in combat zones, warn opposing forces of potential military action. Here's how The New York Times reported on this as well. Quote, around 10 p.m. last night, the military stepped up its attempts to suppress the protesters, a crowd making its way through the Washington, excuse me, the Chinatown area of Washington, had gone relatively unbothered by law enforcement, having snaked across town, blocking roads and chanting, we can't breathe, George Floyd, and hands up, don't shoot. The group, for the most part, was peaceful. Then, a Black Hawk helicopter followed by a smaller medical evacuation helicopter, a medevac helicopter, dropped to rooftop level with its searchlights aimed at the crowd. Tree limbs snapped, nearly hitting several people. Signs were torn from the sides of buildings. Some protesters looked up while others ran into doorways. The downward force of the air from the rotors was deafening. The helicopters were performing a show of force, a tactic used by military aircraft in combat zones to scatter insurgents. Again, the Associated Press reporting tonight that this specifically is what the president ordered U.S. military aircraft to do, this combat zone maneuver against Americans in the streets of an American city. The president and the defense secretary um, using the military this way and talking about America this way um, has led to criticism from some esteemed military leaders like General Tony Thomas, the former head of Special Operations Command, and General Martin Dempsey, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and Admiral Mike Mullen, another former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who tonight joined that criticism and, frankly, raised it a level, saying, quote, I remain confident in the professionalism of our men and women in uniform. They will obey lawful orders, but I am less confident in the soundness of the orders they will be given by this commander-in-chief. We must endeavor to see American cities and towns as our homes and neighborhoods. They are not battle spaces to be dominated and must never become so. That was from Admiral Mike Mullen, who served as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff from 2007 to 2011, spanning the George W. Bush and Barack Obama presidencies. Tonight, a senior Pentagon official, James Miller, who was Undersecretary of Defense for Policy from 2012 to 2014, also resigned from the Defense Science Board at the Pentagon in protest of Defense Secretary Mark Esper accompanying President Trump on his photo op last night. 